Hi, I'd like to speak about a property of stars that is hard to determine, except when we have cases of stars in pairs, where we have a binary star. This is where two stars orbit around a common center of mass, as opposed to the solar system, which has one star and planets orbiting around it. About half of all stars are found in binary systems, so it is common, even though our own solar system has only one star. The thing about binary stars is that they can be used to determine the mass of each of the stars in the system using Kepler's third law. First of all, let me look at a couple of definitions. An optical double is not a binary system. It's just when you have two stars that happen to be in the same direction as seen from Earth. So the stars may appear like this, and uh, they may appear like they may be in a binary system, but over time you can watch this and see that there is no orbit taking place. One star is close, the other star is further away. This is an optical double. A visual binary is a true binary where you could see both of the stars, either by eye or using a telescope. So just from this one photograph, we cannot tell if this is an optical double or a true visual binary. Newton's version of Kepler's third law involves the period, the time taken for the stars to orbit the center of mass, and uh, the semi-major axis of the orbit. It's the period squared divided by the semi-major axis of the orbit cubed. The semi-major axis of the orbit um, is also the, uh, in terms of the average distance between the stars. And this equals 2 pi divided by the universal constant of gravitation times the sum of the two masses of the two stars. And this is exactly what works in the solar system, except here it's applied to a binary star. Now the light curve is something that's very important in a binary star system, and that is what about the brightness over time? And can we tell the period, which is how long it takes the stars to orbit the common center of mass, from the light curve? And that is uh, yes in, ca in many cases. In the cases of an eclipsing system, one star blocks the other star, either totally or partially, and we can see what the period is, how long it takes. So the light curve is simply the time and the brightness. So the brightness plotted versus the time of the star. And this can be the brightness in terms of the apparent magnitude, for example. In the case of an eclipsing system, we have one star going in front of each other. First of all, this picture shows both stars together, and we see a brightness constant here before the eclipse. Then we have a primary eclipse. Uh, the red star is moving in front. The smaller red star is moving in front of the yellow star. The brightness drops dramatically. And then after the eclipse, we have the both stars again. During the secondary eclipse, the uh, uh, other star is in front, and there is a lower depth of eclipse, and then it repeats again and again. And this is how we can not only tell the uh, period of the orbit, but the sizes of the stars, and also the semi-major axis, the distance between the stars, which is important in determining the mass. So if we have, a, if we have uh, two stars that are so close together where we can't see them as separate stars, but we can tell from the spectrum that we see lines from both sets of stars, this is called a spectroscopic binary. And we can see either one set of lines because the other star is too faint 
and that is called a single line spectroscopic binary and one set of lines will move back and forth in a double line spectroscopic binary this is when we see the lines of both stars shifting back and forth. An eclipsing binary is when one star eclipses the other. You can have uh, um, both stars eclipsing in a primary or secondary eclipses or just one. And uh, an eclipsing binary will either be in a visual binary, meaning we could see both. That's rare, but a spectroscopic binary is the most common case for an eclipsing binary. A close binary is one simply they're so close that gravity can deform their shape. And uh, finally, the light curve of a binary is the plot of a brightness, the brightness of the star as time progresses, and it's helpful in determining the period. So to remind you, uh, the HR diagram is the plot of the spectral class versus luminosity. And, and uh, sorry, the spectral class on the x-axis here, the luminosity on the vertical axis, and we have the main sequence, the giants, the supergiants, and the white dwarfs. And uh, these are plotted on the same diagram where we can plot the luminosity versus the temperature of the spectral type. So this is the HR diagram, but for the main sequence, stars are, are plotted here with their mass. And so uh, one solar mass, two solar masses, three solar masses, up to 20 or 35 solar masses. And so when we look at stars that are on the main sequence and if they're in a binary system, we can determine their mass, then we find that we have um, a relationship. And this relationship is called the main sequence mass luminosity relation, which means that the, for main sequence stars, the larger the mass, the higher the luminosity. And another way to say this is the larger the mass, the further it is up the main sequence. So if it's a main sequence star, we can measure the, uh, uh, we see this relationship between the mass and the luminosity, or in effect, the temperature as well. So the O and B type stars have the highest masses, and the uh, K star, like the sun, is lower mass, and the, uh, um, the G star, like the sun, is lower mass, and K and M stars are lower than that. So, determining the mass of a star, well, we have two methods. As we've shown, the first direct method is using the um, binary star orbit to, and Kepler's laws, to determine the mass, and that only works if the star is in a binary system. If the star is on the main sequence, we can use the main sequence and mass luminosity relation by just finding where it is in the main sequence and using the diagram here to find that if its temperature, for instance, is 10,000 degrees, then its mass will be between two and three solar masses. Likewise, its luminosity would be something about 10 or 20 times the luminosity of the sun. So we have two ways to determine the mass of a star, if it's part of a binary system and if it's on the main sequence. Either way allows us to determine the mass of a star. A star that is not on a uh, the main sequence and is not part of a binary system, we will not be able to do that. 